First, we're going to talk about some DSLR options. The Sony FS5, which we're using now, costs around 5K, so it's definitely a professional level camera. It's a good option though for a cinematic look, and it allows you to film with a flat picture profile, which basically gives you more flexibility in color grading later. To show you what we mean, here are some examples of raw footage and then the final graded clips. It also has an electronic zoom feature, which allows more dynamism when you're filming in situations where unexpected things can and often do happen. The Blackmagic vlogging camera is another great option. It's much cheaper, around 1000, and it's probably easier to use but the quality is still very good. It's really perfectly set up for vlogging, so obviously I personally love it, and you can easily film yourself handheld. The only downsides are probably the shorter battery life and the lack perhaps of some of the more advanced features of a DSLR camera that some of you may want to use. Recording with your iPhone or smartphone is another good option. Obviously it's really handy, often you've got it with you, it's a small device and the quality really is very good. We're recording this right now with an iPhone 8. You can also enhance your iPhone recording massively by just adding some external microphone and we'll talk about some great options for those later. But here's an example with the iPhone 8 and I think it looks very, very good. So you might think about using a tripod, especially in static situations. They're ideal for interviews and live streaming because you're not going to be moving around a lot and you just want the camera placed, lit nice and easy. Now there's also, apart from we recommend the Manfrotto tripods because we found them very good to use and we've had several of them. They start from maybe 60 euros right up to very expensive depending on how good a tripod you want to get. There's also some good options for your phone. I have this tripod that I use a lot when I want to set up an interview. I put it on the table, put my smartphone in there and just use it to video myself and the person I'm interviewing and that works really well also. You can also go handheld or use a shoulder rig. A shoulder rig basically gives the camera operator much more control, but it would mean that you would need somebody to operate your camera for you. You're not going to be able to do it yourself. With a handheld, also it gives another operator more control to move around, but if you're doing it yourself, you're going to need a smaller camera, like a smartphone or perhaps the Blackmagic vlogging camera that we were just talking about a minute ago. It's a great option. Here's a short video we made earlier this year about using the Osmo Mobile 2 for stabilizing your shots and allowing you to track people or objects, which could be very handy for any of you who are teachers and want to demonstrate something. The Osmo Mobile 2 made by DJI. This device is amazing because once I clip my iPhone into it, I can power it up by pressing here, et voila, it stabilizes my shots no matter where I point my phone camera. I have a joystick here as well to control the direction. You can see here moving my phone and on the side you can see I can zoom in and out by pressing this button. However, my favourite function is that using the DJI video app that comes with it, I can assign either an object or a person to be tracked by the camera. Let me show you. I'm just going to ask the app here to track Kasha. So here I click on this here and then when I move from this side to the other side, you can see that my phone is tracking Kasha's face. And when I come in back into the middle, and I'm just going to ask Kasha to gently move to each side, you can see that my phone is moving to track her every movement. And it stays glued to her face, which I think is pretty cool. Lighting. Often when we think about lighting our set, the first thing we think about is what lights do I need to buy?
Well, a great and very budget-friendly place to start is to think about what natural light can I use? Can I film close to a natural source of light like a window, like we're doing here? It's always really nice to have some natural light on your set. It helps to diffuse the light and it's not as harsh on the person that you're filming. Another thing then that you can use is what's known as a practical light. Stanley Kubrick, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, was a great proponent of this. And that's basically when you use light both as a prop and as a practical source of light, like we have here behind with the bulbs. Practical lights are light sources visible within the frame that also function in lighting the scene. They can include lamps, string lights, candles, the headlights of a car, pretty much any prop you can think of that emits light. The options are endless. You can also use LED lights as another source of light. LED lights can be both attached to the camera or on a stand by themselves. With LED lights, you can change the color temperature and the intensity. And I have an LED light to my right hand side just to show you how the color temperature and intensity can be regulated right now. Editing is another essential skill that you need to learn. But don't worry because there's lots of different options for everybody. You can really start with free editing software so it won't cost you anything and start to learn the basic skills. There are three key editing softwares which are aimed at budding editors, one of which is the renowned free editing software owned by Apple, iMovie. This software is split into three tabs. Media, in which you can ingest, organise and edit your video footage. Projects, which stores all of your editing projects that you've worked on. And Theatre, which stores all of your finished exported files ready to showcase to your audience. Next is the Windows 10 alternative to iMovie, which is their video editor. Again, free of charge, this software is also designed with ease of use in mind with a one window simple layout where you can organize and edit your videos with complete ease. Finally, if you're looking for a software with a few more options and the ability to complete the whole cycle of post-production from ingesting footage to the final color grade, we recommend Adobe's Premiere Pro CC. This software is used by film and TV experts worldwide. However, if editing is completely new to you, we'd suggest using one of the other two softwares, purely because this software takes your post-production up another level. So we've put together a small video for you which explains how to use the free iMovie editing software, as we're all Apple MacBook users here at GoCreate Academy. This should easily explain the basics of the software and how to use it. Okay, so iMovie should come installed on every Mac. Here's the basic layout. And here you can see how to drag and drop the footage you wish to edit. I'm using a short vlog from Instagram model, Alice Dimova. First, let's find a part of the video that we maybe want to cut out. Maybe because it's boring or she ums and ahs too much. All you have to do is click split clip in modify and delete the part you don't want. Alternatively, you can drag the ends of the clips to the desired length. Remember, vlogs are always better when they are snappy and quick. People have pretty short attention spans these days and we want to keep them interested. Here, you can drag the clip to make it fade in and out to make for an easy transition. You can do the same with the audio. And if you do something wrong, just press Ctrl Z. If you also want to add a title to your vlog, you can do so here. Simply click at the top and share to social media or save the film to your computer. It's that easy. The first thing to consider is the sound of the room where you're recording. Make sure you don't record yourself too close to any reflective sources, like windows or mirrors. That will result in your voice bouncing off those reflective surfaces and creating unwanted ambience. If you're lucky enough to be recording in a larger space, then just be careful of unwanted reverb, which can be off-putting. To somewhat negate unwanted room sound, we often close mic our subjects using what's known as a Lavalier mic. This is a very cost-effective way to record someone coming in just over 50 pounds. Another option if you're using an iPhone to record is to use a mic plugged straight into it. We have a Zoom IQ5 and a Shure MV88. 
Both of them have apps to control them and are compatible with most video recording and streaming software. The main difference between them is that the Zoom has a built-in headphone port. So if you're, for example, doing an interview at a music show, you can ensure that you can monitor the sound as you go. The Zoom retails for about £80. It may be that you already have mics lying around. If you do and you're using your mobile to video record yourself, well, there's this device here, the Rode iXLR, which simply allows any condenser mic to be used with a smartphone. As you can see, there's a headphone jack and volume control here too. We often use this together with the Rode Reporter mic when we want to interview people at trade shows. This combination could of course be used inside if you wanted to add some form of interview to your teaching lessons. However, we actually prefer the wireless route to deal with our sound. So if you want to be demonstrating some serious axe work, complete with all the facial expressions, you might enjoy the freedom wireless transmitters give you. At the recent Communic Asia show, we were introduced to this company who persuaded us to invest in this product, the Boya UHF Dual Channel Wireless Lavelier Omnidirectional Microphone Kit. Coming in at £170 or thereabouts, this gives you two wireless transmitters complete with a dual channel receiver. This gives great flexibility, meaning you can use a Lavelier mic for your voice with one transmitter and either plug in your guitar to the line and input on the other transmitter or use this, a Boya wireless mic transmitter, to mic up an acoustic guitar, for example. This system can work with either DSLRs and smartphones too, and are remarkably easy to use. The transmitters and receiver just automatically find each other, so they require very little technical know-how. We've provided a few more alternatives at different price points, especially if you need to use more sound sources at once, which you can download in a link we'll send you after this webinar. There's an absolute stack of different software you can use, from Skype, GoToMeeting, FaceTime. However, if you want to do webinars like this, complete with optional registration, then we'd recommend something bespoke for the job. We've used Webinar Ninja, GoToWebinar, and a few others. But our two favorites, without a doubt, are Zoom and Wirecast. We love Zoom first and foremost for one thing. It's rock solid stable. And even if you're working with reduced bandwidth internet, it seems to have superior video quality than other platforms. We've done hundreds, well, actually thousands of webinars and meetings with Zoom, and it's never let us down. Here's a little video covering the main features. Scale your meetings to thousands of attendees with Zoom's video webinar features. Keep your webinars relevant to your audience with Zoom's flexible controls over attendee registration that allow you to gather valuable information. Designate up to 25 interactive panelists that can present and screen share with thousands of attendees. The host can promote any viewer to an interactive panelist at any time. Live Q&A chat allows you and your panelists to answer attendee questions on the fly. Zoom webinars feature Q&A, polling, and reporting. See how easy it is to host webinars with Zoom. Whilst we love using Zoom, we often use it in conjunction with some software called Wirecast. Wirecast is simply awesome. It's what we're using today via Zoom. It's like having an amazing live TV production facility, but in software format that runs on your computer. We've broadcasted all around the world using Wirecast, and if you want to go for a high-end production feel, then there's nothing quite like it. We've provided links for these packages, plus additional software recommendations on a downloadable document. I'm sure you'll be able to find something intuitive to use, but always put stability before everything else. One other piece of software we'd like to mention is something called ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow basically allows you to capture whatever you're seeing on your computer screen, which is great for doing pre-recorded webinars. Here you can see how Peter has captured a session in Logic Audio, where he's talking about ducking compression. The great thing about this is you can highlight the mouse clicks, add comments or images, and even have yourself appear within the shot too, if you wish. 
OK, we're going to look at a couple of different ways to control the balance between a voiceover track and the music track. To be really successful in business, where do you start? Well, for a lot of the So here you can see I've got the MVO from a previous example and the music behind. And, and how do we balance those two tracks? To be really successful in Well, there's business, obviously using the slider here to the volume well, slider to try and balance things. Alternatively, I can actually write in automation. At the International University of Monaco, one of the world's most prestigious and successful business schools. So you can hear the volume of the audio changing accordingly. However, I'm going to show you a little technique that's uh, really cool. It's called ducking compression. And it's actually using a compressor, but in a slightly different way. And the key here is finding a compressor that allows something called side chain. And basically, ducking compressor allows one signal to control the level of another. In this case, the uh, level of the male voiceover will control the level of the backing track. So when the voiceover comes in, the level of the background music drops. And whenever there is a pause in the speech, the background music is restored to its former level at a rate set by the compressor's release control. I put some general settings on the bottom right hand corner of the screen there so you can experiment yourself. But of course, let your ears be the judge. What we're aiming for is to achieve something similar to the effect created in this next audio example. To be really successful in business, where do you start? Well, for a lot of the world's most accomplished business people, it began in Monaco. To be specific, at the International University of Monaco, one of the world's most prestigious and successful business schools who offer undergraduate to masters to exist. This software is quite expensive, about £150, but it's pretty much the best you can buy. However, you can find free versions online too, though with a limited feature set. As always, find what works best for you and don't be daunted by any of this. It's always the case of taking a plunge and trying things for yourself. So how do you create your set? Well, the first thing to do is to work on a color palette before buying anything so you can make sure that all the elements will work with each other. For example, here in our set, we've used a range of desaturated colors, like blue in the picture, yellow in the chairs, red and browns for the books and the table, and green for the plants. You can create your own color palette, or what we call mood board, through online inspiration. And you can get your inspiration from various visual art forms, like photography books, documentaries, and films, and that will really help your ideas to flow. So how do you want people to feel when they're both watching you, or maybe you're bringing people into your studio to interview them? So one of the things that you probably don't want to do is to have lots and lots of lights because people will feel very hot and uncomfortable. And not only might that block any creative flow or good ambience that you have going, it might also make the people look uncomfortable, which won't be good on camera. Another thing to really remember is not to have distracting things on your set. You're probably better off to have nothing behind you than to have distracting things like these. I got some experts in here to design this today. So it does make me wonder, is the most expensive set always the best? You see, when people are distracted by that, they're not really watching you. They're getting brought to look at those things. And you don't want them to do that, especially if you're a vlogger or teaching. You really want them focused on what you are saying and the information that you're trying to impart. Green screen is another option you can use as your backdrop. Now, sometimes green screen is a really good option if you want to superimpose different things going on in your background. It certainly makes it easier maybe than building a set. But something that you have to be really careful of with green screen is first of all making sure that it's lit equally. The green is lit equally all the way across. We're going to show you some bad examples of that right now. With the actors lit differently than those images appearing on the screen in the background, we wouldn't blame you for thinking you could probably do a better job at home. Oh, oh. <laughs> and also,
also remember not to overuse it. You know, just because it is green screen, you don't need to have lots of unnecessary things going on in the background. <laughs>
as I said, you're going to be much less likely to fidget or to keep adjusting your position if you're sitting comfortably.